soul and all that is within me bless his holy name bless the lord oh my soul and forget not all of his wonderful benefits one more blessing from the great god of heaven that he has given us another opportunity to come into his house and worship and praise his name in spirit and in truth uh, they said Trevante, you went home and changed i had to come record a sermon so that's why i had to i had to put a suit on i would have loved to have my t-shirt on i was real comfortable but you know can't wait to take it off but god is good amen so good to see everyone um that came back out um, on this afternoon i want to take a moment and encourage everyone um to attend wednesday night bible study um, we are beginning um, a new series dealing with spiritual warfare. You ever had to deal with spiritual warfare? Uh, that would have y'all. Any of y'all ever had to deal with spiritual warfare? Well, I think you need to come and hear some of this stuff that we're going to have to say. We're going to have um, everybody's uh, copies of everything put together for everyone. So we want you to come out. Be sure you attend that. And somebody else you ain't seen, tell them to come too. Amen. 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 Acts chapter 12, beginning at verse number 1, concluding at verse number 5. I've already preached two hour long sermons, so y'all get 55 minutes. How's that? Acts chapter 12. Beginning at verse number one. The Bible says, Now that time Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. And because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of unleavened bread. And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quaternions of soldiers to keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Peter, therefore, was kept in prison, but prayer was made without ceasing of the church to God for him. Just look at somebody this afternoon and say, you need to learn how to pray. But they are like, they don't need to ask the Lord for them. Look at somebody, you need to learn how to pray. Now, in the scriptures that we just read, something is taking place that we see too often that is missing from the relationships that we have today. What is that? Church people praying for church people. Come on, now. Amen. Come on, now. Amen, brother. I didn't say church people praying on church people. We do enough of that. But I'm talking about church people actually praying for their brothers and sisters. The Apostle Peter here is on death row when people are praying, they are making petitions to have his sentence commuted, to have his sentence exhausted. But I've come to tell y'all, if you haven't realized that prayer will change things, yes, that when all else in your life is failing, if you can get a prayer through the God, your prayer can be answered. And in the early church, corporate prayer was the standard. We see in the early church, it is a model for the church of today. In Acts chapter 5 and verse number 42, the record is that the church members met day to day, day after day, in the temple courts and from house to house. In other words, they were getting together with one another. They were fellowshipping with one another. They were having relation with one another. And here in Acts chapter 12 and verse number 5, we find the church praying without ceasing for one of their brothers that is in trouble. And the Bible says, y'all know it, that the prayers of the righteous are very much. And my brothers and sisters, I want you to know that there is great power and there is great deliverance that is possible through prayer to God. And you can check the record on that because the good book is laced in line with men that prayed to God and God answered their request. Y'all remember Moses prayed and God spared Israel from judgment? You remember Joshua prayed and God caused the very sun to stand still? You remember when Hannah prayed and God gave her a baby boy? Solomon prayed and God gave him wisdom? Elijah prayed and what happened? God sent down fire raining down from heaven. Jonah prayed and it brought him out of the belly of the well. The thief on the cross prayed and guess what? He got eternal life. There is great power. There are great things that are possible when you take your problems and your worries to the Lord in prayer. And because they knew how to get in touch with God, and because many people were being healed of sicknesses and disease, and because many were being delivered from bondages of sin, what happened? The church grew. Come on now. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Because they were prayerful people. That's right. 
They were delivered from these things they were dealing with, the church grew. And I just want to tell y'all this afternoon that if we want the church to grow, we need to become prayerful people. If we want the church to grow, guess what? We got to pray more. If the church would learn how to pray, wonderful things would happen when we would stay on our knees before God, asking God to help us with the things that we are dealing with in this life. Now let's look at the problems they were dealing with. They were not just dealing with problems that they had within. They were dealing with problems that we had without. Understand that the church that was started in the most unlikely place in the world, the Jesus said to begin at where? Jerusalem. But Jerusalem was harder. They didn't want to hear what they were saying. They wouldn't even hear the prophets, much less these Christians. And that's why Jesus wept over Jerusalem. He said in Matthew chapter 23 and 37, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often I would have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathered her chickens under her wings, and ye would not. In other words, Jesus said to them, Y'all killed the preachers that I sent down now there to you. I really wanted to bring y'all in and gather y'all like a chick on the whole wings, but you were not willing. And so the problems that they were dealing with, they were, they were hard-headed and they were hard-hearted. Yes, yes, they killed and stoned the preachers. I ain't trying to go down there and do no mean doc. I don't know about you, but I ain't, I ain't trying to go out. They killed and they stoned the preachers that were sent down there. And matter of fact, they killed Jesus. And now the disciples were supposed to go there and start a church. It was a hard field of work. And then there were problems that they were dealing with from within. The treasurer of the church had been stealing money out of the receipts and had finally committed suicide. Y'all remember him, Judas. The most prominent leader of the church had denied the faith and denied that he had ever known the Lord. Who was that? Peter. They were commanded by the officials that they were not to teach or even speak in the name of their founder, Jesus. The hypocrisy and the lying had been discovered in the membership of the church, which threatened the power of their witness. And there was conflict over who the gospel should be given to. Peter had broken with tradition and was preaching to those that they considered to be the untouchables. And now Peter had been put in prison and Herod was planning on killing him to make a bunch of rich Jewish people happy. Tell somebody it was just a messed up situation. But let me just tell you that as long as the devil is permitted to live, the church is going to have problems. As long as the devil is permitted to live, the church is going to experience problems. That is why we as God's people, we got to learn to pray, not after the fact, but we got to learn how to pray in the midst of the issues that we are going through. And guess what? You need to pray all times. So before you ever enter a situation, guess what? I'm already prayed up, already got what I need to handle this situation that I'm going to have to deal with. So in the midst of our problems, we can keep going. In the midst of our problems, we can learn how to persevere. The Bible said, but thanks be unto God, which giveth us the what? Victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, I want you to know that the early church, when they were dealing with stuff, they prayed through their problems. When they were dealing with issues, they prayed through their problems. Tell somebody this afternoon, whatever you're dealing with, you need to pray. You need to pray. You need to pray. Need to pray. There are many people... That honestly, I think, don't believe God hear prayer. That's true. Yeah. I, many people, I, I honestly think, because they'll pray and they'll tell God about a situation, but still they'll go out behind God trying to do everything that they can do on their own to try to affect the situation. I don't know about y'all, but I know and I consider it a privilege to be able to carry not some things, but everything. To God in prayer. You can't keep some problems for yourself and give some problems to God. You got to learn how to leave it all at the throne of mercy and let God handle that situation. How many of y'all be real with yourself and say, it's some stuff that you can't handle by yourself. It's some stuff that you can't deal with by yourself. You can't, you'll go cuckoo for cocoa puffs. You try to handle it by yourself. You got to take it to the Lord and let God deal with that problem. Some people you got to take to God. You got to take them to God because if you don't take them to God, they're going to take you to a place that you don't need to be. So we need to take everything and everybody to the Lord in prayer. Well, we sing that song said, don't forget the family prayer. 
said, said Jesus will meet you there. Don't forget the family prayer. And it's a verse in that song to talk about how prayer will bring your wondering child back home. I, I don't. I just wonder if you maybe there are some parents in here that's ever had some issues with your children. You didn't know you couldn't do anything with them. You just had to take it to the Lord in prayer. And what did God do? He answered your request. It's never time to quit. It's always time to pray. It's never time to give up church. It is always time to remain prayerful and to lift up our situations, to lift up our cares, to lift up our worries to the Lord in prayer. While Peter was here being kept in jail, the church never stopped praying for him. The night before Peter was to be put on trial, the Bible tells us about he, how he was sleeping. And how he was bound and changed. Y'all know when you know God is on your side, you can go to sleep at night. Y'all know when God is on your side. I'm talking about this man locked up in shackles, in chains. Last thing would have been on my mind would have been some sleep. I'd have been worried about, man, how I'm going to bust up out of here. Who can I call? Who can I send a pigeon? Who can I send a raven to? Somebody that's going to get me up out of here. But he was asleep because he knew whose child he was. He knew who he belonged to. And he knew that if it was the will of God for him to get delivered, guess what? He was going to get delivered. He was going to get brought out of that situation if it was the will of God. The Bible says a soldier was guarding him on each side. And two other soldiers were guarding the entrance of the jail. But suddenly, that's God's way of showing up. God just appears and just makes things better all of a sudden. Y'all know it don't take God a long time to get something done. God don't need no 10-step program. God don't need no 7-step program. All God needs is a moment, is an instant to change your situation. The Bible tells us that in the moment, in a twinkling of an eye, we shall be changed. So if it don't take him but a moment to change us into that celestial body that we're going to receive one day, don't you think God could change the little bitty thing that you're dealing with in a moment in a moment if you would just give him the opportunity to work in your life an angel came and poked Peter in the side and woke him up said Peter Peter we got to get up Peter we got to go Peter was kind of confused get, get, get up Peter we got to go and he led Peter out until he got to a place to where he was and the Bible says that the angel disappeared from his sight. Yes, Peter going to where the church people were. And the church people, you know, they, you know, they were praying. I would have figured they thought God was hearing what they were saying. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you ought not pray for anything you don't want the Lord to answer. You ought not ask God for anything that you don't want God to do. I mean, these folk up in there, I mean, they just praying. I mean, I can just imagine they just sweating down praying. And all of a sudden, somebody knocking at the door. Go see who that is, Rhoda. Rhoda, go over there to the door. Oh my God. Y'all, it's Peter. He had the Rhoda. Hey, Peter ain't that no dope. Peter in jail. That's why we in here praying. He locked up. They couldn't even believe that God had answered their prayer. Yes, take quick. I don't know about y'all, but there have been times in my life. I, I, I ain't talking about what somebody told me. I'm talking about what I've experienced for myself. There have been moments in my life where I have prayed. And before I could say amen, God was working something out. God was making things better. God was answering my request. That's why you ought not stress about anything in this life. You ought not worry about anything. You ought not let stuff have you weighing down. Because if you can just have the opportunity to take that step up to God in prayer. God will deal with whatever you're going through. I'm so glad that when Jesus hung on the cross and he shed blood and died for our sins and it talked about that as he was dying that away in the temple, it said that the veil in the temple was rent from the top to the bottom and it let us know that there was there more, no more separation between man and God. So now we can all come boldly before the throne of grace that we might obtain mercy to help us in the time of need. I'm so glad that I got a friend that I can call. It can be 12 o'clock at night. 1, 2, 3 o'clock in the morning. I got somebody that I can call and when I call him, he gonna answer. So if you stress out, you need to pray. Dealing with anxiety, you need to pray. Children being hard-headed, pray. Spouse acting the fool, pray. You know, Whatever it is that you are going through in this life, you need to pray. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Why do 
should we take it to him? Because he understands what you're dealing with. Come on now. He understands what you're going through. Well, Jesus to say, yes, he understands everything that you're going through because the Hebrew writer lets us know that we have not in high priest that cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmity, but Jesus was in like manner tempted just as we are. What was the difference? He did not see it. He understands what we're going through. He understands what we're dealing with. And y'all know sometimes you can't even muster up the words to pray. Are you, yeah, some of y'all know what it's like to, to be so weighed down by the cares of this world that, you know, you know, sometimes you can't pull out the long King James prayers that you got in your back pocket. Sometimes, sometimes you ain't got time to sit there and, and pray all night. And sometimes all you can say is, Jesus, Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, I need your help right now. Sometimes you can't say all that. And let me tell you, you just saying Jesus, he understands everything that you're feeling. You saying, Lord, have mercy. He understands everything. The groanings that are going on inside of you and your mind. God knows the stuff that you don't even know that you need as of yet. He knows exactly what you need. He knows exactly what you stand in the need of. And why he ain't gave you the stuff that you want? Because he knows you don't need it. He knows what we're standing in the need of. He knows what we need. And he says in his word, and I believe this to be true. We quote it all the time, but I don't think we really believe it. He said, he never put more on me than I'm able to bear. Soon as the wind blow hard. Lord, why the wind had to blow so hard? Come on, bro, we do it. I'm coming out the room, stuff my toe. <laughs> stuff my toe, that hurt. Come on, we do it, bro. He would never put more on me than I'm able to bear. So if you were going through it, church, you're able to handle it. Able to. That's right. Because if you were not, guess what? He wouldn't have gave it to you in the first place. Well, preacher, are you telling me that it's always going to be easy to pray? No, no sir. No, I'm not sir. telling you that. No, life, you've lived long enough to know that you're going to experience difficulties in life. You've lived long enough to know that you will encounter some situations. That no matter how much Bible you know, you quote Romans 16, 16, Matthew 16, 18, Ephesians, you quote all that good stuff. But there are some things that will happen in your life that will test your faith. That will try everything you believe and everything that you hold dear. That's why you got to stay on your knees before God. I don't know what I got to face tomorrow, but I know who's in control of tomorrow. How do I prepare myself for what's coming? I got to stay on my knees before the Father in prayer. So when I get worried, just give it to the Lord in prayer. When I find myself getting stressed out and angry, take it to the Lord in prayer. What a privilege. It is an honor. We ought to take advantage of the honor that has been given to us. That you ain't got to keep that stuff to yourself. Walking around here weighed down, barred down by the stuff that you're dealing with. But you can take a load off. You can give it to him. And allow him to deal with your situation. But there will be times, as I said, that it's not easy to pray. That's why it's good to have people around you that know how to pray. You need that. Let me tell you, you need some people around you that can get a prayer through to God. You need people that when you are dealing with situations in your life, because sometimes you can't even pray for yourself. And you need people around you that's not going to be so all holy and mighty and you don't want to quote scripture at you and stuff. But you know what? They're just going to take it. To the Lord in prayer because they realize at the end of the day I'm praying for you right now I could be calling you back 30 minutes later saying hey man I need you to pray for me because something somebody just called my phone and man my, my you know something just happened I'm standing in the need of prayer not my mother not my father but it's me oh Lord and I'm standing in the need of not the elder not the deacon but it's me, oh Lord. And I'm standing in the need of prayer. I don't know about y'all, but I need y'all to pray for me. We all need prayer. Because our adversary, the devil, has already gone out. The Bible depicts him as a roaring lion seeking those that he may devour. 
And he would love to find you strolling out of here on a Sunday afternoon. Just enjoy worship service. Come on now. He would love to Come catch you out a moment. That's why the Bible says, let any man that thinks he stands, take heed unless he fall. Don't ever say what you won't do. Don't ever say where you won't be because you never know what will happen in this life. You never know how situations will present themselves. And something you said you never do again. The devil will bring about the situation and when desire and opportunity to meet. I don't care how much scripture you read. Anybody is bound to fall to temptation. So how am I going to stay ready for those times? I got to be prayerful. I got to pray, Lord. I don't know about you, every day of my life, if I don't pray anything else, I say, Lord, keep me covered. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He know what I mean when I say that. Lord, danger seen, and I say, while I'm out driving, Lord, I need your protection. Lord, while I'm in the grocery store, somebody might think of a wise idea to come up here and shoot up the place. Lord, I need your protection. Lord, I don't know. I, everywhere I go, I need you to watch out for me because I never know when my adversary is going to have a trap set up for me. I can be out in the wilderness. After 40 days of not having anything to eat, here comes the old devil wanting to tempt me, wanting to get me to fall. I got to be ready. I got to be prepared. I got to have a thus saith the Lord on the inside of me so that I can deal with those. It is written. Thus saith the Lord. It is written. Let's get on our knees, church. Yes, and stay in the presence of God. If it ain't but five minutes out of your day, just get somewhere by yourself and talk with the Lord. Leave your phone in another room. Turn the TV off. Don't, no, no, I'll call y'all back later. I need to take some time to talk with the Lord. And they tell you, when you become a more prayerful person, you will see how much better you can handle situations. You will see how much better you can deal with life when you are a person of prayer. Because first of all, you're not even anything that comes your way. You're just going to divert it straight to the Lord. Come on now. Come on now. This ain't my Lord. <laughs> right on out. Sit right on to you. Come on now. Come on, brother. First class, coming to you, Lord. I'm sending it straight to you. We know in love ourselves we're weak. He's mighty. He's powerful. He's strong, church. Able to help us with anything that we deal with in this life. But what I love about God, he's not going to make us do anything. He's not forcing you. If you want to deal with it by yourself, see how long it lasts. You want to sit over there and try to do this and do that, see how long it works out. See how long. But we know we can't. That's why we got to lean and we got to depend on Jesus. Stand on his word. Stay in the presence of God. So when the days of trouble come, and days of trouble are going to come. Guess what? If you ain't been through days of trouble, guess what? Guess what? They ride the car. What the old folks say? Keep, keep getting up and saying good morning. Keep getting up and saying thank you, Jesus. And guess what? Some trouble is coming. Some trouble is coming. Don't wait until trouble comes to start praying. Don't wait until you're between a rock and a hard place to start praying. Right now, develop a prayer life with God. You ought to get you a prayer partner. Your brother and sister here in the church. Somebody that you can hook up with. And y'all, if y'all don't do nothing else, y'all can just pray. The prayers of the righteous. They avail as much. This man was locked up waiting his court day. He just knew things were going to go south. But because the people of God got together and offered up prayers on his behalf, God heard them. God answered their requests. Don't be like them surprised when God answered your request. Love you, God. You showed up that quick, man. I ain't even said amen. You know? Don't be surprised when God answers your prayer. But rather rejoice in the fact that you have that relationship that when you call, God answers. Because you know, there are some people that pray and he don't hear. My Bible still says that God heareth not the prayers of sinners. The Bible says that you can get 
so far away from God that what he'll do? He'll turn the devil into me. I don't ever want to be in that state. I don't know about y'all. I want to always be in a predicament because I'm going to always need him. So I want to be in a place that when I do need him, I can go to the Father in prayer. Lord, I ain't even got to let you take nothing drawn out of the other dancing. I can just say, Lord, you know. You know. You know what's on my heart. You know what's on my mind. You know what I'm dealing with in my spirit. Lord, you know. Deal with it. It's your issue. Take care of it. What a privilege. What a privilege it is to carry, church. Everything. Not some things. So stop trying to keep some stuff for yourself and give some stuff to God. Take everything to the Lord in prayer. Amen. Amen. Maybe you're here um, this afternoon. Maybe you're watching us um, and you're not yet a Christian. You're not a member of the body of Christ, which is the church of Christ. You come by hearing his word. What is his word? The gospel. What is the gospel? That Jesus lived, that he died, and then on the third day he rose again according to the scriptures. After hearing you believe the same, you said, except that you believe that I am he, you shall die in your sins. After belief, you repent of your sins. Repentance is a change of mind that produces a change in our action. And after repentance, you confess with your mouth the sweetest name known to mortal tongue. That is that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. And then be willing to be baptized for the remission of your sins. Have your sins washed away, done away with. Never to come before you in this life and not of the life that is to come. And the Lord himself will add you to his body. Maybe you're here. Maybe you're watching with us on tonight. And you're standing in the need of prayer. Now, first of all, I say, it's me. I'm standing in the need of prayer. If you have something that you're dealing with on tonight, something in your heart, you, you know, nothing is too light to ask for prayer. Come on now. If we're dealing with things, we're struggling with things in our life, never be too proud, too boastful, keep it to yourself. Ask for prayer for the prayers of the righteous. They still avail much. So if you're here, you're subject to the invitation, you're standing in need of prayer, why not take this opportunity and come now as together we stand and sing the song.